Well, hello folks, here we are again with another teeny tiny technical tutorial from No SLLC. That's me. I'm going to show you how I uh, jury rigged up a um, circuit that uh, would allow me to show the kids in my kids' tricity class um, alternations, um, but alternations that are very, very slow so that we can uh, physically, manually control. Uh, how how fast the uh, transitions are between one polarity and the other polarity of an alternating current. Now there are some uh, circuits that allow you to generate uh, AC types of signals or alternating current uh, types of uh, um, I guess we'll just have to call them signals. Uh, but as I said, uh, they're too fast. Uh, I can't control them. So I said, I'm going to build a circuit that uh, is really, really slow. I can just slide a slider around and show the kids on an oscilloscope how these things uh, change from one current direction to the other, a true alternating current. So the first thing we need to do in this tiny little technical tutorial and uh, what I do with the kids in the class is uh, define what in the world AC means, alternating current. Now, I'll give you an example here of what a lot of people say is an AC or alternating current kind of a circuit, or often just called an analog kind of a circuit, but in fact it's not. It's a variable direct current circuit. Here's a very simplified telephone circuit with a power supply, direct current DC a power supply, a battery. So the battery always supplies electrons out of the negative pole and they go flying around through the circuit and come back to the positive pole. So what happens here then is I have a continuous flow of electrons, current, direct current. I have a continuous flow of electrons in one direction through the circuit. When I talk into the telephone up here, what I'm effectively doing is changing the resistance value out here at the telephone transmitter, which changes the amount of a current flowing through the circuit. And I can plot that on various kinds of plotting devices. But in fact, this is not alternating the current because the current is always in the same direction. There's just more or less of the current in the same direction. So this is really a variable DC circuit. Um, and that's not what I wanted to show the kids. I wanted to show them a true alternation of current. So I have current going one way and then the other way and then the other way and then the other way. Not like this. All right. So. What I really want is to be able to plot a alternation of the current flow so that it's sometimes going in you know north to south and sometimes going south to north through that uh, telephone wire all right and when I plot something like an alternating current, I can do it from what is known as a zero reference point. So I go up to 10 volts positive and then swing down to 10 volts negative on the pressure or the voltage. Um, which causes the current to go in one direction and then alternate back and go the other direction. So it's kind of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, or in this case, up and down, up and down, up and down. So the current reverses direction. Now, if I had the right kind of meter, which is not the ones we use in the class over here, because this one has its zero reference over on the left, a standard multimeter. Uh, if I were to try to see this voltage right here using just the direct current, the DC value, what would happen is this meter would go, go up and then down to zero, up and down to zero. So I'd see it going up and down to zero, up and down to zero, but I could never see it going negative because this meter won't go negative. What I really need is a meter like this where I have the zero uh, reference on the meter in the center. And so then I could see the swing up to plus 10 volts down to minus 10 volts. That is representing the current going one direction, then the other direction, because voltage pushes current. So if I reverse the voltage, I will reverse the current. All right, so this is what I would see on a meter if the, uh, the uh, alternations were slow enough, right? This is pretty fast right here, but if they were slow enough, I could see a needle swinging back and forth. The problem is um, most of the circuits that you build with the kits I use in the Kidtricity class, uh, these alternations are just too daggone fast for something like a little needle to swing back and forth. So I really need an oscilloscope, which is what I bought, uh, to be able to run off my laptop. And that, that was my ultimate uh, uh, aim in this uh, little cobbled up circuit I'm going to show you is to be able to control how quickly this moves back and forth so I can see it easily on an oscilloscope. That was my aim. All right. 
Now, some people, the purists, will say, well, that's, uh, you know, not exactly the correct definition of AC and, you know, alternations and stuff like that, because you could have something like this. You could put an AC on top of a DC. In fact, what that would do then is uh, make a varying DC, because if I am putting an alternation on top of a, let's say, 10 volts right here, for example, of DC, the alternations would add and subtract from that DC voltage but they would never effectively go down right they would never reverse that is the current flow would never reverse it would be like the uh, first slide i showed you where i have a varying dc if you were to just use a meter uh, to try to to uh, follow these variations so one of the things about having uh, been around for so long i mean i'm older than dirt is that uh, i found that there's just a massive confusion uh, because english doesn't explain things very well sometimes particularly uh, from different uh, backgrounds in electronics because there are many different uh, fields you could be working in and technically be working in electronics and you learn a certain terminology in those fields and uh, when you go to another field for example uh, uh, move from a, a data repairman to a voice repairman or from an electrician into a telephone guy uh, the words may not mean exactly the same thing that you thought they meant um, so having a very wide background in some cases like my own uh, I'm very shallow don't have a whole lot of technical depth on a lot of things but I'm pretty broad um, it certainly has shown me over the years that uh, just trying to make sense of what a word means is often a, a big handful here. So, so anyway, this is um, AC on top of a DC. I've built many circuits that did this. But what I really want to do is uh, build a very simple circuit out of just a couple parts uh, out of this uh, SC500 kit. This is the one I use for Kids Tricity 2. Uh, if you have the 300 kit, or I think even the one, I can't remember if the 100 kit has the diodes these uh, light emitting diodes can't remember but uh, you only need a couple of parts here and these are the parts uh, a variable resistor that uh, changes resistance from this pole to that pole from about 200 ohms or so up to about 50,000 ohms depending on where the slider is and over here the same thing it varies from about 200 up to about 50,000 or so it depends on uh, uh, which version of this uh, RV you have they've changed them a couple of times over the years but uh, this is close enough uh, you need an R1, which is a 100 ohm resistor, uh, the red and green light emitting diodes, two battery packs, and uh, what I'm going to show you here that, uh, in the circuit uh, that I'm going to build for you in just a second is I'm using a couple of analog multimeters and a bunch of uh, digital multimeters. One of the advantages of teaching these classes is I've got boxes full of these things, uh, which I have to keep buying every year because the kids break them, of course. And um, so anyway, I've got lots of meters, so I'm going to show you a circuit here that uh, I'm going to build, and it's a very simple circuit. Uh, here's the battery pack number one, number two, here's the variable resistor, here's R1, the 100 ohm resistor, the two light emitting diodes, and here's all of the meters. Now these digital meters right here, I'm going to have hooked up on the circuit, so this guy is going to uh, read the voltage across R1, he's going to read the current across or through R1, He's going to read the current through this leg of the circuit. He's going to read current through this leg. And this guy is going to read the voltage drop across that one. And this one's going to read the voltage drop across that one. So that's a really simple circuit. Uh, it looks a little complicated when you see it for real. Here it is right here. Here's my battery pack, battery pack, variable resistor, R1 resistor, fixed resistor. Here's the two LEDs, red and green. Here's my um, analog multimeter that's going to read the voltage across. That's the V voltage across the LED. This one's going to read the voltage across the LED. This one's going to read the current coming through the LED. This one's going to read the current. That's the I, the intensity of the current, through this LED. This one's going to read uh, the voltage across R1 and the current through R1. So that's the setup right there. When I... Um, have the uh, slider in the dead center right here what happens is uh, the two circuits because I effectively have two circuits I've got one here current flow will want to leave here negative to positive right it's going to want to leave here go down through here down through here through the meters uh, into the LEDs and come around this way so this is one circuit right here that's the flow electron flow 
this one over here is uh, like this. It goes from negative through the meters, blah, 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 up through the LED, through this R1 back over here. So you can see I've got one flow that wants to go this way, right? Goes this way. And then I've got one flow that wants to go this way. So when I put the slider direct deck dead in the center here, what happens is the two uh, cancel each other out because this is going to let a mount go this way. This is going to let an amount go this way, and they're going to kind of bang into each other and effectively give you a zero. And you can see that right here when I have the slider in the center, I have no voltage drop across R1, which means I have no current flowing through R1. And if you look over here, LED, uh, this green LED, there's no current flowing through it. And over here on the red one, there's no current flowing through it. Um, the purest um, high-tech dudes that are looking at this right now are probably spotting that that uh, voltmeter right there has got a little tiny bit of voltage on there. Uh, that's a bit beyond what I want to go into right here. Just pretend you don't see the man behind that curtain. All right, so let's move forward here a little bit. When I move the slider over to the left, I decrease the resistance in this leg of this variable resistor. What, what then happens is I end up with current flow through the R1 resistor, down through the green uh, LED, and back over to the battery pack. So I end up with that circuit flow right there. And guess what happens? I end up with a voltage drop across the R1 and current flowing through the R1. And notice it's negative voltage and negative current right, going in this direction. And you can see the current right here through this leg, right, through the LED. And you can see a much higher voltage drop across the LED. Whereas over here, I have no current through the red one, right, none. So it's not lit up, although it kind of looks like that in the photograph, doesn't it? Uh, and my voltage is still over here on the pretend you don't see it behind the curtain. All right, so I ended up with current flow over here. Current flow, I can see it. Voltage uh, drop across the LED. When I move the slider over to the right, guess what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to end up with current flow in this leg over here, which is going to turn on the red LED. The green one's going to go off. This is going to go up. This one here is going to go up to about 2.4, just like that one did. And this meter right here is going to boink, swing over here, uh, indicating the voltage drop across the red LED. And this is going to go back to zero, and that's going to drop back down there. And this, then, is going to show the same value, but it's going to be a plus. It doesn't put a plus on here. It just, it just shows the, the number, right? So only when it's reversed do you get the negative up here. So what will happen then is I move this back and forth, the LEDs are going to blink back and forth, you know, on, off, on, off, on, off, like that. And these meters are going to swing around, and I'm going to see current coming up and down and up and down and up and down over here. That's what's going to happen. Now you can do this easily without all these meters. You can build this circuit really easily um, and verify that I've got current because the LEDs will only conduct when current is in the pr uh, correct direction. So even if you didn't have all these meters, you could still uh, verify that this is taking place because one will turn on and then it'll turn off as you re, uh, reverse the current flow as uh, evidenced by the current flow changes through the R1. Right. But I want to show you uh, here, if I can get this thing to run, uh, an actual uh, operation. So let's see if we can get it going here. I know the quality is pretty crappy. Hey, I'm working with no budget here, folks. Um, so there I was on zero. See, all zeros all over the place. And I'm going to start sliding this back and forth here. And you can see the LED red, green, red, green, red, green. You can see the current come up, go down, come up, go down. You can see the negative and positive here. See how it's changing from negative, negative to positive to negative to positive. Because that's um, the current going through the R1 is going back, you know, this way, then that way, then this way, then that way, then this way, then that way. It's truly an alternating current, as evidenced by all these meters, but easily seen by the red and green alternations on the LEDs. But that's not what I was after, because you can build some circuits with this kit that will make these red and greens flash alternately, meaning that you've got an alternating current. What I was really after was to be able to show this uh, in this slow motion, right? By slow motion uh, reversals, 
uh, on this oscilloscope. So let me go to that one and show you. Over here on the scope, I have the zero voltage reference line, zero volts right here. That's my reference line. And as I start swip, uh, moving this back and forth, you can see that I'm clearly moving from no volts to positive, no volts to negative, no volts to positive. And if I do this um, and, and get it synchronized, I can make this, uh, this uh, sweep hold still. And of course, it's not a nice clean sine wave because I'm pretty crappy at doing this over here. Um, but you can see it's definitely an alternating current. The current's going one way, then the other. Yeah, it's going one way, other way, other way, other way, un like that. Back and forth, back and forth. So that's what I was after, was some way to show this in such a slow cycling, that is just by moving this by hand, that I could see it on an oscilloscope as an AC signal. And there you go. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool, actually. All right. So I hope that was helpful for those of you just uh, beginning to learn electronics because this is a very, very confusing um, enterprise to enter into. Um, and, and a lot of it has to do with the terminology, for Pete's sake. Just like, you know, it's the Tower of Babel thing. You know, I, it was an old saw. I used, to, I used to say this a lot, and I usually forget to say it anymore. I know you think you understand what you thought I said, but I don't think you realize what you heard is not what I meant. Man, that is so true in electronics. But it also is what makes it interesting. Um, because if you could learn it all in 10 minutes, what fun would that be? Okay, if I, uh, when I, not if, when I come up with another kind of goofy circuit that I can make out of these uh, 500 kits or 300 kits, uh, I'll post another video up for you. So have fun. Don't shock yourself. <laughs>